Hey guys, welcome to another video. So today we are making the best sugar cookie recipe ever. It is my go-to, I absolutely love it. It is childproof and doesn't need chilling, need I say more. As well as an awesome icing that is super easy and literally looks amazing. Now, let's get started. So I did attempt to make this a chatty video and it didn't work out for so many reasons that I will get into a little bit later. But for starters, we're going to pop a cup of butter as well as a cup of sugar into our mixing bowl and you're going to beat that for about 5 to 7-ish minutes until it is nice and fluffy. And also don't forget to preheat the oven like I did right there, I had to go back and do that but hey. And this is the point where Angel abandoned me, she just didn't like the sound of the mixer it seems. So yeah, mama was left alone to just make cookies apparently. Now, as always, when I need to cream butter and sugar, I always end up scraping the bowl down every so often because for whatever reason, it just doesn't work out if I don't do that anyway. So in another bowl, we're going to mix our dry ingredients. I'm going to be adding three cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, as well as half a teaspoon of salt, and just giving that a good little mix to make sure that our baking powder is all throughout our flour. And you may notice at this point the reason why I wasn't able to continue the chatty version of the video. My phone is right there. Everyone kept calling me. I got so many phone calls during the time I was making these cookies and this video. I don't get that many phone calls during a day. I don't know what got into everyone's day. But yeah, I need to learn to be like, I'm working right now. I gotta go, but I, I don't, anyway. So this is what we are looking for, like the creamy sugar and butter. And next up I'm going to crack an egg into a bowl. I saw this video the other day where a girl cracked an egg into her mixture and it was bad and yeah. So I just cracked it in a bowl to be sure. And I'm also going to be adding a half a teaspoon of almond extract as well as a teaspoon of vanilla extract and giving those a blitz until they are nice and combined. And once they are combined, we will be slowly adding in our flour. Now at this point, you want to check your mixture and you do want it to kind of be coming together and have a slightly crumbly effect, but like not be too buttery. Mine did seem a bit stickier and buttery than I wanted it to be, so I did go ahead and add a couple more tablespoons of flour just to give it a little more like toughness, you know what I'm saying? So you kind of have to see how you go. It's a very forgiving dough, which is what I really like about it in that you can add some uh, flour and you can kind of manipulate it a bit later on and still get a really, really awesome result. So now that my dough is ready, I am just going to flour my bench top and throw the dough right on top of there. And we're going to roll it out. And fun fact, at this point, Angel and Iris decided to join me. So Iris was sleeping and she woke up and Angel was, yeah, so <laughs> right on time, both my girls are with me, we're going to roll out the cookie dough, and we're going to cut our shapes. joys of working with children. So here I'm just helping Angel with her own little piece of dough. I helped her kind of, you know, put some flour and roll it out and cut shapes. It was really, really cute. I do have to say this is the proof that this dough is really, really versatile, as in you can leave it there for like half an hour, an hour, just on the bench, and literally it will be perfectly fine when you get back to it. Angel worked that dough throughout the entire process. She just kept on going at it. And by the end of it, yes, it was spewing butter, it was insane, but it really, really took a lot to get it to that point. And we have the first batch out of the oven. They smell amazing. They are just, I absolutely love them. And I'm going back and I keep on kind of gathering the scraps and re-rolling. That is what I also love about this dough, that you can just keep re-rolling and it is really fine. The butter doesn't spew out 
as easily as other doughs where as the more you handle them the more they get really soft and you know like the butter starts coming out and they become really buttery and oily so this dough is really really forgiving in that it allows you to just keep rolling it out several times and cutting out your shapes So this dough actually makes quite a few cookies. I believe the recipe says it does yield about 36 cookies. I definitely got 36 and maybe even more. I guess it depends on your cutters as well. Now at this point Iris was literally cracking it and I had to like pick her up and ugh, anyway. Moving on to the icing, you're going to want to add 2 cups of icing sugar into a bowl and then you're going to add about 2 to 4 tablespoons of milk. Now you want to add the milk slowly because you really want to watch the consistency and don't make it too runny. So I did start with 2 tablespoons. As you'll see here, I almost put a third and I kind of held myself like, nah, I don't need to do that. <laughs> so I added 2 tablespoons and kind of gave it a good stir to check out the consistency. I did end up adding a third it tablespoon of milk as you can see here. But I did stir and the consistency just, it wasn't what I wanted. I wanted it to be thick but not too thick. Like I wanted to kind of hold its shape when I put it on the cookie. So I did end up adding a little bit more extra sugar just to get the consistency that I wanted. Now you will also be adding a tablespoon of glucose syrup or corn syrup depending on what you have. This is fun getting out of the tablespoon, like, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was interesting for sure. But yeah, this also helps it be nice and glossy. Everything will be okay, cause all I wanna do is spend this holiday with you, tomorrow it is Christmas. Once I have the consistency I am happy with, I'm just gonna grab two little bowls and separate the mixture into three parts. And I'm going to dye one of them red and the other green. I thought I would go with a bit of a red, green, and white Christmassy colored theme. And I think it worked out pretty well. The green, I will say, gave me a little bit of a hard time. I had to like add dye, I think, three times. But hey, the gel coloring was way better. One was gel, the other was like a liquid coloring, so yeah. Now when it comes to putting the icing on the cookie, I would suggest you put it kind of in the center and leave a bit of a border because it does kind of spread and that will lead to it kind of leaking off the side, so you don't want that to happen. Staying to the middle of the cookie is the best way to go about that. Now I also added some sprinkles to mine. I did try and do like a few two colored cookies and that kind of thing. It was, it was fun, it was fun all around. And this icing does dry and it's kind of hard on the top but soft in the center and you are able to stack them once they are dry. So kind of put them flat until it's dry and then you can pretty much stack them and do what you want with them. So yeah, these are how my cookies turned out. I am so, so happy with them. I absolutely love the ease of the specific icing. The cookie, it's just, the whole thing is so easy. And when you have little children, easy is the main thing, okay? It's the main word that I work my, my whole life around right now. So yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you guys in the next Christmassy video coming up very, very soon. Bye! Cause all I wanna do is spend